Welcome to my little review for ExploView software for your digital microscope. These microscopes have been out and available for several years now. With the bracket provided, they're a little bit of a joke trying to use one, but with the proper mounting brackets and the proper techniques for adjustment, these can be a very, very useful tool. And I look forward to using it very actively in my work. I bought mine specifically for working with electronics, specifically PC boards, especially surface mount technology, for checking solders and making sure I didn't have any problems when I repaired the board. The one I have is a USB only version, and I'm quite impressed with it now that I've got a couple good mounts for it. And the mounts are not the subject of this video, I'll get into those in another video, but suffice to say, I think this thing could be equal to what was just a few years ago, several thousand dollars in equipment. And it's only 25 bucks off eBay. But let's get into the software. There are at least five different installable programs for your digital microscope. One of those comes with Windows 10. The other are four are available on a free download basis, and I'll list the download locations in the description, and you can download them there. This video only covers ExploView, and I'll address other versions of digital camera software in their respective videos. There are wireless digital microscopes, and they are USB-only digital microscopes. I only have the USB version, so I won't be addressing it from the wireless standpoint in this video. This video covers ExploView in version 3.2.11. If any of you know of a newer version that has come out, please do post it in the comments. We'd all like to know about it. Now, from my experimenting around, the software will load and run from XP onward, but the driver is only workable from Windows 7 onward. You will lose some functionality with the software if you don't have Windows 7 and onward and the provided driver installed. Windows will default to its own driver, and that will give you functionality, but not full functionality. Now you need to get the driver. What you need to do is go to the link in my description and download amcap.zip and unzip it to a permanent location on your hard drive. Open that newly installed folder and go to the driver folder. Make sure you see the driver I have circled above. This is the driver we're going to be installing. For Windows 7 users, now go back to your main menu and go to control panel. Now go to Device Manager. Look down and see if you see an Imaging Devices listing. Click on that one. You should see this. If you do see this, you're done. You need to proceed no further. If you don't see this, you still need to install the driver. Now if you Windows 10 users, go to Settings. Go to the search box, type in Control Panel, and then click on the Control Panel result. Then go to Hardware and Sound. Click on Devices and Printers. You should now see your USB camera showing up, and you want to double-click on that, and that'll take you to the next one. Now you want to click on Hardware. You should see your device in this list. It should have a GL in front of it if the driver's installed correctly. If it doesn't, you want to double-click on this. All users should merge from this point, and now we're going to install the driver, at least make sure it's the correct driver. Click on Driver in the top row. Now, if you're not seeing that GL prefix, you want to now click on Update Driver. Browse my computer for driver software. Here you should see the correct folder where the driver is located. If not, you want to go ahead and browse to move to that correct folder. Once you get to the correct folder, click Next. The computer should now go off and update the driver. And when it comes back, you should be looking at the correct driver with that GL prefix in front of it. Now you should have the driver installed, but just to be sure, click on Driver Details and make sure this is what you're looking at. Okay, and here comes the fair warning part of the program. Windows will tend to drop this driver, especially if you have a laptop you're using with a webcam built in, or you're using another camera like a Logitech. Be sure you have the folder handy so you can reinstall this driver. I suggest leaving it on your computer at a place you can find very easily. Okay, now it's time to install the actual camera software. You want to go to this link, and yes, the link is in the description. Once you have it downloaded, you want to put it in a directory that's going to be a permanent location on your hard drive. Don't forget where the directory is. 
Once you get the software installed, go ahead and double click it and you should arrive at this screen. Okay, let's take a look at the icons in the upper left corner. The first is the setting screen. The second is a take a single photo. The third is a take a timed sequence of shots. The fourth is take a movie. The fifth is a software information. And the sixth is the software shutdown. First thing to note here is you're locked into 640 by 480, both for the movies and any shots you might take. This is the case regardless of the driver you may be running. There may be a better driver for ExploView out there, but I haven't been able to find it. As a reminder, this software will accept input from webcams. In this case, the Logitech C920 will work just fine with the software. The catch with the Logitech being that you're still limited to 640 by 480 videos, but you do get the 1280 by 1080 photos if you're going to take those. Now let's look at a few things this software does have, the others don't. In this case, multilingual support right off the sitting screen. And it also has a very good time snapshot function, which will allow you to, of course, make time-lapse videos without too much trouble. Okay, if you have the driver installed, clicking on the More button will take you to this. Now we're going to do a few features, Windows 7 or later with the correct driver. The first one is this zoom screen. You can digital zoom with this. You can digital pan with this. Obviously the pan is pretty limited. The center button on the pan basically cancels the zoom and returns the camera to its original position. Under special effect, I don't think any of this really applies to these digital microscopes. One thing you might want to do is make sure your power line frequency is set to 60 Hz to avoid flicker. The video processing amp screen does work. You can change all your camera's parameters that are shown here. The camera control screen, if it does appear, does not work. Well, yeah, I hope you found this video interesting and useful. If you did, consider giving me a like and definitely consider subscribing. I just might have a few other things here coming down real soon you're going to see. I definitely got some more digital microscope videos on the way. So, until I pass cross again, y'all take care now. Yeah, and we'll be in touch.